Okay, so today we're talking about capped and uncapped ranges, basically the way that we look at trades and the decisions we make when we're looking at trading and, and justifying how much profits can be made. So first, by definition, how I classify a capped trade is a capped trade is something that has a certain percentage cap on it. So for example, a 1% cap trade would mean that you can make 1% total. A 2% cap trade means your, your, your profit cap is a 2%. A cap trade simply dictates the cap of how much you can make on the trade. So it's just by its own definition, kind of straightforward, cap versus un uncapped trade. Uh, an uncapped trade is a little different. Okay, this gets into a little bit of a deeper theorem. Um, an uncapped trade doesn't mean it just is, is not capped. It means it is, because traditionally you would think, okay, uncapped means it could go anywhere. In a way, this is true, but more, more so uncapped means it has specific reactions. So this breaks into like deeper learning in the future of, of chart architecture and things like that. So today we won't be talking so much about how to see uncapped trades. We'll be talking about more how to see the capped trades and how to define those as starting to this discussion as, as, as this is a multi-tier discussion, capped versus uncapped trades, because identifying capped trades is easy, just like identifying hold levels is easy. Then there's a very deep theorem that goes into what I call the uncapped range. And the uncapped range starts to break into chart architecture and uh, some of these different things. So uncapped is the chart architecture and, and the way that it shows you where a trade is getting capped. So an uncapped trade would be, or sorry, a capped trade would be like this. It can live in this bound. An uncapped trade doesn't have that bound, right? So it deletes that bound to say, oh, it can live in a 1% range or a 5% range or a 20% range. Uncapped means that the range is infinite until it has a reason to cap. So there's a bunch of capping points inside an uncapped range that can say, okay, this trade can go bigger if event X executes, it can go larger if that event executes, and so forth and so forth. So uncapped is only uncapped until it is capped. So it's almost like a, a capped waiting room, right? Like a capped trade waiting room. Like it's waiting to be capped. So that's uh, as far as we'll go into an uncapped definition today because that's just another whole tier of discussions and, and something we'll learn deeper later on. So before we do that, we learn capped ranges. So, so capped ranges um, are, are what we see in trading when we are taking any trade, when we are looking at anything we do, we, uh, we, we have to have an understanding of where the cap on the trade is. So if you are trading something, you need to know when 1% 1 is the most it can make. You need to know when 2% is the most it can make. You need to know when 5% is the most it can make and uh, so forth and so forth. So a very quick basic example of what a capped range would be would be the range that something lives in. So right now we have whatever this 12 hour is right here, whatever wherever this level was, it's kind of capped range is, is right here. So, so it has kind of this capped range of uh, 78 or 77, 80 here. So it has this, this capped range where it has hit a backside, I believe. I believe it actually hit something inside of this range, which is also the backside here. So that's, that's fine. We have the backside here. We also have the uh, more concrete one hour, I believe it is. So if we go here and uh, where you would actually target the trade, I believe there's a one hour level there as well, which was just a part of the leg of the move, right? So that's kind of the uh, one in the same level here. So, so, you know, either one of these represents the same piece of this move. So you go back to the daily and uh, you, you can see where Let's take this replay tool back to where we need to be. Um, you, you can see where that's, that's, that trade exists on both sides here. It, it exists inside of the range of, of the greedy level, and it also exists as the backside of the whole level, right? As if the backside of the whole level were to hold this thing up and prop it up, you're, you're you know, going to, by definition, have a front side somewhere down in this range. Backside, front side, and ranges inside of here, backside, front side combination. So that, that's, that's fine. Um, what we need to know is where it kind of the capped piece of this is. So, so when you look at this trade, this is fine. This is the level it hits as, as it's supposed to, as it's going down in its ranges, it hit that level. But its total cap in this trade would be from here to here. So that's the capped range. That means it has to live inside that bound. That means if you execute the short here, it cannot breach past this point unless it's shown that it can breach past this point. So the maximum cap on this would then be this point here to this point here. That, that's the maximum cap on this trade is 22.7% or whatever. Maybe it's 20. We'll just round it to 23 because I probably can drag the mouse a little bit and make it 23 and still justifiable here. So it's 23% is where this trade exists as a capped range. So if you're entering this trade, 
you have to first off realize that every trade you're entering on all time frames, whether it's a daily, and again, this is a very simple example. So whether it's a daily, whether it's a 12, 4, 1, 15, 5 minutes, they're all going to have a associated cap with them, uh, a complete range that you can trade and no expectation beyond that, right? So you look at a daily time frame, you're going to have a larger cap. The time frame dictates the cap of the trade, okay? So justifiably, when we look at the weekly time frame, the weekly cap on this trade is somewhere in uh, this region here. There's kind of this untested range in here, which will have a range inside of it, which is what we just had found at 5,300 there a few moments ago. So, so some, some 5,300 level on the, uh, the weekly time frame is its cap. And looking at caps, you have to also realize that in order to attack the cap of a range, so let's talk about that for a second. We justified at first 77, 80 on a daily time frame. Well, it's also going to respectively need that same amount of time frame to go after that range, right? So if you're, if you're on daily charts, it's going to need a longer time. If you're on weekly charts, looking at weekly caps, it's going to need even longer to develop, therefore giving you kind of a expectation versus time proficiency in these trades, right? So you, you create a range, that range is there, therefore capped, and that cap is also time inducive, right? So you start here and you go to this range it's naturally going to take you longer to go to this range because it's on the weekly. So the weekly cap is going to take you longer to get there. It may take multiple weeks, just like this may take multiple days. Just like if there's a monthly cap, it may take multiple months, right? So you have larger profits and, and kind of gets into the, the realm of, okay, the, the definition between day trading, swing trading, position trading, kind of gets into the realm of, of, of these different time constraints that we use to justify these terms, right? So you know, whether you want to be a position trader and be in these for months on end, then you should look at a monthly cap. So if you want to have a position that's open for three or four months, great, no problem. Look at monthly caps and, and justify the monthly result and, and then take that trade with the appropriate leverage that's going to be comfortable for that time frame. And therefore you have a cap that gets hit from monthly to monthly with, within its um, you know, given range. So the, the cap kind of can also help you understand like, oh, this is how long I should be in the trade, which should say, oh, if I'm going to be in the trade this long, how much leverage am I willing to keep in that trade? 10%? Yeah, it's a position trade. Hey, there's a weekly cap here. And I want to do 10x leverage on a weekly cap, maybe, or, or maybe even 25x, maybe, or even, hey, maybe you want to do 100x. I don't know. That's up to you, really. But the point being is that you can say, hey, there's a, a weekly cap here, or even, you know, let's go, go to something a little more smaller in time frame here. And, and you can say, oh, there's a daily here to this point here. Yeah, okay, let's, let's do it like a 40x leverage with, you know, X amount of money instead of doing 100x on a smaller time frame. And, and really, you know, we know that we just have these other trigger points and trigger points against something we'll get into the future. The trigger point would be like a trend, right? You have a trend like this, right, from here to here. And you, you could simply be in this here and say, oh, here's my trigger point. If, if, if we break this trend, I, I release my trade and I exit in profits. But at the same time, I'm in profits until that trend breaks. So really you execute the short here as a weekly, as, as you understand the daily cap, um, your, your target is this and, and really your trigger point to exit the trade would be trend, right? So, so that's just kind of an example of how you can use a cap in, the, in that scenario to say, okay, we have a, a cap here, a capped range on the daily. This is what I'm expecting. However, I can just take profits otherwise. This, this is more setting up a position trade or, or, or more of a swing trade type of setup, right? Again, it's, it's fine. You can do that um, completely at the discretion of, of your own trading routines. That's the way I like to look at these longer term trades as they have a cap and what am I going after? Because simply put, they, they do go after those uh, pieces of the trades at times. So even if you had this here as your daily cap and justifiably, this would be a decent daily cap as it is the backside. Your, your target would have been hit three days later. And if you used, I don't know, even 10x, you would have made 200% on this trade. Wow, that's not bad at all, right? Like that's, that's pretty decent. 200% on whatever amount, 20%, 200%. Yeah, that's pretty good. Even if it's just a 10x short on, you know, more of a safer trade because really at, at 10x, you'd be exiting if it breaks your level up here. So there's not really too much risk there. So you can use a lot. Maybe if you had a five Bitcoin account, you could do 10x for two and a half Bitcoin, right? So, so you could just say, oh yeah, this is relatively safe because what, what's my total loss sum, right? You, you break over top of this level, you exit the trade and you lose maybe a percent or two on, on the other side. You go down to your target. You make 200%. So you can use a larger leverage amount here in this scenario because you're working within a cap that's relatively safe. It's smart. And there's not a ton of risk because if it breaks over your level, you're already in polarization. The point of polarization breaks, you're out of the trade, you're, you're, not, you're not losing a lot for taking a stab at this thing. 
But then your your gains and the upside to this trade is that you understand the daily cap so you can let that trade just sit and amalgamate profits over time or pick a point where you're exiting the trade. So really there's not a ton of risk in taking a trade like that and you can use a large amount in, in that scenario with almost no risk and, 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 and the risk is minimal. So, so one or 2% of 2.5 Bitcoin versus making 200% on the opposite side, right? Like your, your, your statistic ratio is, what is that? 50 to one odds, something like that, 50 to one. So, so 2% with a total gain sum of 200%. So you're looking at a 50 to one trading odds. So I, I believe that's the way it works. 50 to one, a little, little rusty on the ratios of it because I don't use them anymore, but Point being is that it's a relatively safe trade um, because it exists within the cap of the move. So that's one example. Now, this is kind of a daily cap, what it would look like. And you have to start thinking in terms of what are total profits in terms of those time frames. So we've justified this on the daily time frame, right? You've justified this on the daily time frame, 20%, right? That's a decent trade. As you go down in time frames, you don't have those same justifiable points of action. Okay, so say you're on a 12 hour here, you say, okay, here's the, uh, the 12 hour, this is uh, an untested level, you could have taken this, you could have taken this one here, this is kind of the latter point it hit, you could have taken this something inside of that range, we're not going to get into the range discussion today, people already know ranges by this point, and uh, or at least have a, a pretty decent grasp, but there's still more to learn on ranges, but anyways, have a decent grasp of why, you know, what would be in this range that makes sense versus this right here, which could, which, which could reasonably be relatively almost the exact same level. So whether your short was from this range inside of here is an untested range completely with a micro range inside of it, like said I went, but I'm going to. So, so something like this, you know, like a micro range justifiably and even something in here would be maybe even, even there's even, oops, shoot, no, I want that level back. No, I'm going to give it back to me. Give it back to level. Okay, we're going to go back and put that level. Right here. So, so even in here, you know, justifiably as, as this would be the greediest point in this move. And that's still a relatively good short here. And let's take a look here. Yeah, still, still quite, quite a relatively good short. You're only uh, 1% away. So liquidation on 1x. But again, that's not even the proper part of that range. That's just the first thing we saw in the hourly. So, so going back to the 12 hour, whether, whether you're justifying this or this, this is a 12 hour cap, which also means that you can have a lower amount of leverage with a safer amount of risk. But a, a 12 hour move is justifiable on a 12 hour chart. If you're starting to talk about caps and ranges, we have to first understand that there are a dwindling of percentages. So, so in this case, we started justifying this move on the daily and we can see that there's a daily justification of 20%. So, so we can justifiably say, okay, there's 20% here. If it goes after the daily level, it's likely in a daily cap scenario. So if you're going after a daily level, you're justifiably within reasonable action to say you can go after the trigger point on that daily, or you can release the trade on a trigger point or go after your target, whichever way you want to do it, right? So justifiably, you have 20% on the daily. As you go down in time frame, you are going to also reduce that justification. So working oppositionally, if, if we were trading on the one minute chart, which is extremely internal, there's only a justification somewhere underneath the 20%. So, so it's most likely between some, somewhere between, I don't know, 0.5 to 2% at a max. And, 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 and if it was justifiably 2% on a one minute chart, this would be a rather large move. You, you, can't, you can't have a cap over 2% on a, on a one minute trade. Like that, that's extremely rare. Typically on one minute trades, you have a cap of, 0.5, right? So, so on 100x leverage, you'd have a cap of 50% in a trade. On the opposite, where you're on the daily and you have 20%, and if you were to 100x that, you have 2,000%. So as you move down in time frames, the cap also moves down. So when we are justifying any of these moves, we have to understand that the point, right? So, so if this was the 12 hour from back here, like this, this is a 12 hour from back here, where does the 12 12 hour range exists. It exists right here. So, so the cap on this, this trade on a 12 hour justifiably, if we make this decision on a 12 hour chart, the cap exists somewhere inside of this range. So this being the top of the range, and we're going to get rid of these other levels here just to kind of clear it up. And we're going to take the replayer tool and we are going to go to this point in time here. And that's our target. We justified it on the 12. This is kind of like the, uh, the biggest piece of the range. So, so you have the leg of the move in here, right? So maybe on a, on a 12 hour, you have the leg right here. 
which gives you the greediest point here. So, so your range exists somewhere between, between those two points. So if you were to go to the hourly chart and say, okay, well, where does this exist? That's the back side. That's the front side. This is tested. So, so you, have, you have this right here, which almost is tested as well. So you can say like, okay, this is tested. So that range is kind of dead. You've got this, you've got that, you've got this is tested. So, so yeah, you, on, on, on 12 hour, you have something in the region of this right here as the level. So scaling your leverage with that, you've kind of got two areas here where, where you could justifiably say there's a target. So, you know, as we looked at the daily cap of the range before it's 20%, now it's dwindling down to a 10% or a 6% scenario. So if we just let this hit play, kind of see where this thing goes. And it goes right to your target. And, and that's great. I wonder if this actually breaks down sooner. Go to the 12. Yeah. So, so justifiably, you can, you can have that as your cap of the range. So, so you can have a scenario where you say, oh, I've justified this on the 12 hour. I have 6% I can make on this move. Or if it's within the range, you have possibly 10% you can make on the move. Now, what happens in a scenario like this where it works right through it, it goes right through it. Well, you probably missed the larger cap of the time frame. So you probably missed something on a bigger time frame that justified the cap being somewhere else. So that would be the same thing if you justified it on the four hour, you may have missed something on the 12 hour. It's why we work from the front side of the chart in terms of front frontal is right here. So weekly to daily to 12 hour to, to four hour to one hour to 15. And we don't work um, on the interior pieces of the trend. We work on the frontal pieces, which is the exterior. So, so the frontal piece here would be a weekly. So you could say, okay, where, where is it weekly justification? Oh, it held a weekly level. Justifiably, this could possibly go all the way down to that 5,300 range. Because again, this is a weekly level that's hitting a hold. Right, so it, it is actually holding the weekly move because the range on the weekly exists from this point here, which means the hold level can be anything from this region in here. There's a hold level in here somewhere on a smaller time frame, but really the, the point is right here because this creates the ladder, right? Ladder points here to ladder point here. So, so justifiably, you're you're actually in a weekly cap right now, and this is why we work from exterior pieces down and not interior pieces. As people are seeing, the more you work interior on a trade the less you see of that trade, okay? So say that again, that the more interior you work, the less you see. So if you start on the larger timeframes and, and work your way through this, you can say, oh, this was justifiable on the daily. There's a daily cap. This is justifiable on the weekly. There's a weekly cap, but also shows you how long that trade should exist, right? So if we are indeed in a weekly cap scenario, we could be taking the next three to four weeks to get to this point. We just hit it now. It could take four more weeks before we get down to this point. So, so really you should just be in a trade against the, and now I'm sure there's other trends. This is BTC USD perp. So I'm sure there's other trends that exist on, on charts that have more information like XBT and whatnot. I'm sure there's different trends to work with here. So we, we're just drawing this as, as an example. It's not, probably not the trend that would be used. It's probably more something like this, or, or I'm not sure where the trend is because it's just simply not on this chart. So I, I uh, but I'm sure there's a trend there, right? So once that hard close breaks that on a weekly, you could justifiably exit that trade as a trigger point. But if we're simply on the 12 hour here and saying, oh, here, here's our range. We justified this range from here to here, right? We said 6% to this point, 10% to this point. Well, that's a problem because you miss the bigger piece of the range. This is why we don't work internally to exterior. This is why we don't work from back to front. We work frontal down or if you want to think of it in terms of exterior to interior pieces, we were always work from the exterior piece first because you simply just miss things. It happens all the time to everybody. You simply just miss things. Even, even right here in this moment on the daily, if, if you were here on the daily and you're laddering down long-term, you're simply going to miss the ladder from, from the longer piece back here, which, which is a weekly justification to this level here, right? Which is a weekly justification. Either this, well, actually, it would be this level at first. So, so in this moment here in time, when you're, yeah, yeah let's exit the replay tool and restart it. So when you're in this moment in time and you say, here's the hold level, you know, is it justifiable on the weekly where the target can go, which is, you know, the untested piece of its range. This is tested here. You can see that this backside front side is already tested. So it might have a front side here that gets bounced, but really the range is tested. So where's the untested range? Yeah, well, it exists down here and this is the greediest point of it. So justifiably, this can exist here because the time frame at, at a larger point dictates the cap of the range right here, right? 20%. And so you see it goes after that level and, and, and then so forth and so forth down. And then justifiably, the larger the time frame that comes, the bigger the cap that it's giving it, right? The larger the move that can happen. You just simply exit this replayer tool, delete these brush strokes, 
So this is again why we work from the front of the chart backwards, right? We work from the uh, front or the exterior pieces backwards for this for this exact reason because we need to justifiably see what's happening on the larger pieces. So so the cap is also the same thing. The cap of a trade exists in that in that same metric where you can say, okay, if it's justifiable on this time frame, then you have to understand where its target could be, right? Based on that same time frame. So now as we go down in time frames, the same thing is going to apply. If we have four-hour decision points, you're going to have that same cap be created on those points, right? So uh, an example would be something like this, okay? Um, let's just maybe go to, I don't know, sure, any random spot. This looks good. For, where's the four-hour range right here, right? So, so your four-hour range, yeah, okay, it exists here as a short. This long is right here. So th this is kind of the cap of the range, right? Like the Pandora's box is the cap of what you could expect in the trade. So you've, you've got... Yeah, 5%. That, that looks good. Really, the range exists. Oops, 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 oops. No, 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 we don't want that. The range exists a little lower inside of here because there could be something here. So we're going to dissect this move a bit. So we're going to say the hourly is here, which pulls this right to here. So justifiably, you have this short here, 4%. So could, could this trade exist? And then, and then even here, if this held the move, you would get out, right? So, so you kind of have two different targets here in mind. Uh, this range is tested, but then again, we'd go back to the four hour here and say, okay, what's justifiable before we start breaking down these lower time frames? Well, this one is highly justifiable right here. So, so I would be using this as my range. So then can this trade exist? Let's see, there it is right there. It's perfect, right? So, so justifiably, you have a four hour cap on this trade. So, so now you have a marquee to say, okay, where can my profits exist like what makes sense to take in terms of profits because now you're getting into the realm of not just picking levels you're getting into the realm of seeing where it can go because that's important too where can this trade go if i'm justifiably saying the cap is on the four hour where can that target be instead of blindly saying oh here's a level let's make one percent and do this a hundred times and make you know a thousand percent or, or, or ten thousand percent or whatever it is that you're trading with leverage wise you know what 100 trades on a hundred percent or 10 trades on 100% or 100 trades on 10%, whatever. This gives you now a measurement of where can this trade exist, right? So really you have anything here is justifiable and it could actually go down into this range. So if we were to break this down and say, okay, is there any untested regions? This is the exact same thing we're always doing, right? We're always saying, okay, this is the greediest point on this move. It can exist within here. It can't break this level. These are good targets as, as your kind of first setup, right? Like your, your first, okay, these are good targets. Is there tested levels versus untested levels? Where does the range exist? Um, you could even possibly break this thing down further and say, okay, well, where's the greediest point in this trade? Yeah, this is starting to look decent. Um, I don't know if it's going to go here, but at a minimum, you can exist within a four-hour cap range here. So instead of just saying, okay, well, we have 1% we can make here. Now, now you have a minimum of 3%, 3.7%. You should be making because this is kind of that hemisphere. And, and even this, I don't really like this. I would actually want to go to a higher time frame and say, okay, that's actually not bad. Actually, you know what? I, I do like that as, as a first target. And that is, that is actually half decent. I'm not, I'm not going to say it's not, even though I know it goes much lower here. That is actually a decent target because it's it's justifiable on that time frame. Like it's justifiable that it holds this piece of the move, as you would have one valley here and kind of a pseudo valley right here. So if this is a level, this is kind of the minimum expectation here. So you you have like a very good barometer of okay, now we understand where the cap is. Now we know where target should roughly be, or at least what we should be making minimum on this trade, right? So then you know you play this move through it actually does look like it hits this range perfectly. So, so we were actually right in this scenario. Can it go down to here? Sure. It can go down to its greediest level. And it would most likely bounce within its own four-hour cap as, as the untested level developed, right? So it would most likely bounce somewhere here. And before we go to that, I would like to actually see if there's something even better, which is here. This guy has been tested here, so, so probably not that. Although it could go here, definitely could go and hit that whole level. This is, you know, let's see if there's anything even uh, better here. So yeah, more likely here. This one is already tested. Yeah, I really like this down to this 8,400 level here. So let's see how that trade would have played out. Now understanding that this was justifiable on the four hours. So, so this is kind of the four hour hold. That's the range within the four hour hold. And it can relatively go after its same piece of the move here. So let's see what part of this gets hit. And let's also mark the four hour. Really, I'd be entering short at 98.3 here. That looks like a pretty darn good level. If it bounces the four, then yeah, I mean as expected, and it should, right? Just hit play here and let's see where this thing goes. Hmm. 
Hmm. Actually, it's this level here, which is fine. Kind of breaking its piece of the move. And there's the trade right there, right? So, so the short executed perfectly. The greediest part of the untested level likely to go after its lower range here at 8,400 or to get released off this trade. And there's that polarity. Same, same piece of that move, right? Like there's that point of polarity in the trade where you see exactly why this trade doesn't pan out. So polarity is something we've been talking about lately. And, and that's that polarity moment. So when this trade hits, you'd expect it to go to here. It doesn't, you exit the trade, right? But it gives you the acceptable range of what is inside of that trade. 